Auspicious greetings to all Dharma friends in North America. I wish you every joy and happiness on Dharma Day. It is my pleasure to be a part of today's very special event, especially under the guidance and hard work of all the diligent bodhisattvas who ensure that the Dharma is always brought to those in need. So today I would like to talk about Venerable Master Xing Yun's latest English translations of Fo Fa Zhen Yi, Buddha Dharma Pure and Simple, not only to send across his core messages about learning the Dharma, but also to ensure that our body, mind, and speech is always in tune with the Dharma. Also to ensure that we are learning in the way that Buddha Dharma is practical, to our everyday life. In other words, Buddha Dharma Pure and Simple is not a book on basic concepts of Buddhism. Instead, this is a book on the basic attitudes about Buddhism. By the side of a river, there live different kinds of animals who share the same purpose, that is, to cross the water to the other shore. However, as the animals are different in size, each thus possesses different strengths and abilities to cover a different range of distances. An elephant is able to touch the riverbed with its pillar-like legs and walk across the water in just a few swift moments. While a horse, initially able to walk across the river, soon finds itself paddling to keep its head above water. At the same time, a tiny rabbit almost immediately finds its head bobbing up and down in the water as its tiny feet swing back and forth to keep afloat. In a similar case of birds flying in the sky, with a flap of its wings, an eagle may cover tens of miles in distance, while a pigeon only a couple of miles, and a sparrow a few yards. The Buddha Dharma is like the deep river or the vast sky. While people may understand or hold opinions on different levels, there is no saying who is right or wrong, greater or lesser, because different levels of faith and spiritual attitude mean different levels of knowledge. Nevertheless, all are connecting with the Dharma in their own way. Which one are you when crossing the river? The elephant? The horse? Or the rabbit? Which one are you in the sky? The eagle, the pigeon, or the sparrow? One must constantly self-evaluate. To constantly self-evaluate, we must be ready to renew what we think we already know. Professor Lewis Lancaster from UC Berkeley shares the same view about self-reinvention. He says, I feel I've reinvented myself for about 20 times in my life. Every time I feel that I can relax, the world changes on me. I just have to be a different person, otherwise I'd become a recluse. We all have to reinvent ourselves many times, as what we learn now will not be enough to last ourselves for our whole life. It just isn't enough. Medical doctors who don't reinvent themselves weekly cannot help us. In other words, what's most important is not whether we have the answer or not. It is actually our ability to reevaluate and reinvent that answer to ensure that what we know is applicable to who we are, where we are in the here and now. Not only should Buddhists constantly self-evaluate as they progress on the path to Buddhahood, they must also assess whether they are actually attaining the true meaning of Dharma and see the original intent of the Buddha through the linguistic explanations, philosophical interpretations, cultural representations, religious values, as well as the various periods of time that give different meanings to the Buddha Dharma. In his book, Buddha Dharma Pure and Simple, Venerable Master Xing Yun, the founder of Fo Guang Shan and Buddhist Light International Association, openly and thoughtfully evaluates the persisting problems and baggage that Buddhists may carry as they read and understand the Dharma. Through a series of questioning and clarification, 
he stresses the importance of seeing the Dharma in a pure and simple way. And there are actually five ways to do so. Number one, seeing with our intrinsic true nature. It is most important to connect with the Dharma through our Buddha nature. Without firm belief in ourselves as potential Buddhas to be, any understanding of the profound Dharma will lose meaning. For this reason, Venerable Master Xingyun encourages Buddhists to believe that by accepting that I am a Buddha, we establish this tremendous belief to achieve anything. Number two, pure and simple means seeing the contrary, the false and wrong. A young man once asked a wise elder, what is wisdom? The ability to make the right decision. Where does this ability come from? Experience. Where does experience come from? Wrong decisions. In the same way, when Dharma appears too profound to understand and too distant to grasp, one way to begin is by eliminating what is definitely not the Dharma. In Socrates' comment on what it means to be wiser, he says, the only wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Similar to the process of logical deduction, the more we know what is not included in the premises of truth, the more aware of our ignorance we are. This too is part of the process of awakening. The premises of truth established by Venerable Master Xingyun is teaching that must ensure the betterment of human life. If it makes no sense, question it. If it makes you unhappier, challenge it. If it gets you nowhere, abandon it. For example, the truth of impermanence has long been mistaken as a pessimistic acceptance of reality, causing fear and reluctance to ever enjoy or hold on to life. Venerable Master Xingyun's message is otherwise. He says, suffering is only temporary not the sum total of life, in which joy and happiness are found. Thus, there is no need to fear suffering, for it is a positive factor of life. Those who recoil and retreat in the face of hardship will accomplish little. Only those who are unafraid of suffering and adversity will truly succeed. This is how any Dharma should be seen, the pure and simple way without premeditated beliefs or cultural baggage. To see things from this perspective is to allow the Dharma to add to your happiness in life, not to your burdens and worries. Number three, pure and simple means seeing in a relative way. Since all Dharmas are conditioned, we must understand that though the essence of the Buddha Dharma remains unchanging, the way we understand and perceive its meaning will vary in its ways relative to the dimensions of time and space we are in. That is to say, if anyone were to tell you that this Macintosh computer is the most innovative and user-friendly of its time, would you, living in the 21st century, even attempt to use it to write your reports and send email? The answer is certainly no because it no longer is the best of now. Similarly, you would not consider this primitive mobile phone to be your best choice, because time and technology has progressed, so you too must choose the medium best suited to your time, in our case, the iPhone. Geography-wise, Buddhism has been perceived differently in different parts of the world. To the Chinese, Buddhism is a religion that involves mainly prayers for blessings for a better death and future life. In the West, Buddhism is regarded as a philosophy. But to the people today, Buddhism is regarded as a way of life, insightful wisdom that helps us confront problems and challenges. The law of impermanence is usually viewed as negative, pessimistic, and nonsensical. However, Impermanence should not be explained in this way. When viewed differently, impermanence can be full of positivity and optimism. Our most loved Winnie the Pooh demonstrates an optimistic view on impermanence quite well. 
He visits the rabbit in its treehouse and enjoys lots of honey. And having eaten all of the honey, as he was about to leave the treehouse, he discovered that he had gained so much weight that he got stuck. Pushing and pulling is useless, so the rabbit too is stuck. But Christopher Robin, the wise little boy who is always optimistic, says to Winnie the Pooh, Don't worry, when bad things happen now, it's bound to change. So why don't we wait? Eventually you will lose weight and then you get to leave. And so as they wait, how does the rabbit deal with the situation? He turns Winnie the Pooh's behind on his wall into a beautiful picture, which he gets to appreciate while they both wait. As the saying goes, when your sky is filled with grey clouds, paint a rainbow over it. Impermanence thus offers endless hope. Number four, pure and simple means what is clear and easy to understand. A common problem among Buddhists is the difficulty to understand the profound Buddha Dharma. For this reason, Venerable Master Xingyun has dedicated his entire life to making sure that the Buddha's teachings are easy to understand and catered to different aptitudes. In order to do this, skillful means is key. For example, the use of images and media technology to explain a Buddhist concept can be accepted as a part of Dharma propagation. Number 5. Pure and simple means being able to clarify and correct the false and wrong. Incorrect understanding and beliefs in the Dharma must be corrected to ensure a right start. Thus, Venerable Master stresses that we need to raise the issue of correcting erroneous views about Buddhism, so that the true meaning of the Buddha will not be lost, and enhance deeper and proper understanding of the Buddha's original intents. After all, Dharma is meant to add to the happiness and joy in life, not to the burdens and worries in it. For example, though wealth is regarded as a poisonous snake by the Buddha in the Buddha Sutras, realizing that life cannot go on without it, why don't we realize that the more wealth we make through right livelihood, the greater our influence and ability we shall have to help make this world a better place? Secondly, instead of regarding fame and gain as filthy and worthless, practicing householders can choose to see these as our motivation to improve and progress in life. Thirdly, rather than seeing husband and wife as foes from our previous lives, we will bathe in the sunshine and support of love when we realize that husband and wife are life partners here to support each other through thick and thin. To sum up, this book enables us to see Buddha Dharma, the pure and simple way, in five ways. As the saying goes, a good start is half the success. With the right attitude, we learn and practice humanistic Buddhism for the purpose of, first of all, 
not to abandon life, but to embrace life. Secondly, not to be free of death, but to die a good death. Thirdly, not to just talk the talk, but to walk the walk. Remember, if it is Dharma which you can understand and apply to everyday life to solve problems, then it is truly Buddha Dharma, pure and simple. Thank you for listening. I wish you every peace and safety in this very trialing time. Thank you very much.